apologize. It's been quite a while since I posted a video. As most of you know, I've been living in a camper for 22 months while my house was being built. I did move into my house in December and I've been uh, working on it ever since. So I want to post a video today to show you the latest piece of equipment that I've purchased to finish out my solar system. I'll show you what this is. I'll show you how I wired it. So let's jump right in. What I have here is the new charge verter from EG4. I ordered this from Signature Solar. Cost me about 400 bucks on sale. But what this does is this allows me to charge my batteries with my propane whole home generator. So if we go days and days and days without any sun and I need to get a charge on my battery, I can turn on the generator, plug this in and dump quite a bit of charge onto my battery. The difference between this unit and most chargers, uh, most 48 volt chargers you're gonna see are gonna be 18, 20 amps. Um, this beast here, if you can hook it up to 220, will do 100 amps. So you can dump quite a bit of charge into your system and get it charged up. If this would still take probably a full day to charge my whole system if it was depleted, maybe even a little longer. But um, it is a backup to the backup to the backup. So let's hook this up today. I'll show you how to hook this up. We'll play with the settings. I'll show you how I wired in my propane generator into, into my solar shed. So let's dive right in. So as you can see, that's my propane tank, 500 gallons. And then over here is my Champion whole home generator. 8.5 kilowatts, so 8,500 watts. I do have up here on the wall two solar panels. I use those to keep the battery charged. They run through this little charge controller that's tucked up here under the awning. And these two little panels keep this battery maintained. So this generator requires a 24 volt battery. So there's two 12 volt, 12 volt batteries down there that I keep charged with those solar panels. So let's uh, look at what we did here. So I followed the uh, directions from the generator, the instructions, and used the proper gauge wire, ran it out the conduit here. Uh, I do have to fill in this trench. The conduit goes under and into the solar shed. So let's take a look in there. So the generator comes right into this sub panel that I wired. So I stuck the panel up on the wall. The generator comes in. Again, it's 220 and 110 generator. Does both. So here's the line one and line two going into this double pole fuse, 60 amps. And then also coming from the generator was the neutral is right here and a ground wire to ground i do have this ran down outside and hooked into two ground rods which is required by code so that was easy to hook the generator into the panel then i purchased an outlet right here this 220 outlet and i wired it all in and i did check it going through conduit up into here into a 50 amp breaker and I do need to switch that breaker out for a 30 amp breaker which I will do I was using the math at 120 volts not thinking that when this thing gets turned down to 48 volts it's going to be less amps so 30 amp breaker will go right here so the way I'm going to wire this charge verter in is since I have two battery racks I've got six batteries in this rack and I've got 
three in this rack. So both of these come out and go into these centralized bus bars. So there's my negative bus bar. There's my positive bus bar. I'm definitely gonna leave that bus bar covered. Wire in the negative, cover it. Wire in the positive, cover it. I'm also for safety purposes using one of these plastic wrenches that I picked up from Harbor Freight. What you don't want to happen is use a metal wrench down here and as you're tightening it, tightening or loosening it, have it arc across these two. If you touch these two to each other, that's bad. You're gonna short circuit this, short circuit this out and this thing could dump hundreds and hundreds of amps. You could probably kill yourself. So I'm gonna be extra careful. I'm gonna turn off the camera. I'm gonna wire this up into the negative and then cover it and then wire it up into the positive and cover it. Excuse all my wire mess here. It's just a network cable. So I'm gonna do it and then I'll show you. So one more thing, as I started to unscrew that, I got a little paranoid. So I went ahead and got some insulated gloves for working on electrical stuff because I really don't want to get shocked. So let me finish wiring that up. So I successfully got them both hooked up. The instruction manual that came with this EG4 charge verter was very adamant that you wire this in before you plug this in or turn any of this on. So this goes first. There weren't, there wasn't any spark or anything when I did that. A lot of times when you're dealing with 48 volt stuff, you get a lot of uh, DC arc across there, which I hate, but there was no spark, so that's good. All right, so I got it mounted to the wall. They are specific that you need to mount it to something that is fireproof. So I don't think you'd want to put this on uh, OSB or plywood. I put it on this concrete board. I also put it in a spot where I knew it was hitting a stud. So it's going through the concrete board, through the OSB, and into a stud. And I got four metal screws on it. I know this thing puts out some heat. So in the summer when it's hot in here, if I have to run it, I might try to figure out a way to vent it directly outside. But for now, there she goes. All right, so it's mounted on the wall. It's leveled. I did put a couple of these little cable holders on there to give it a little bit of structure and help to organize it. So now we're gonna plug it in and then we'll go fire up the generator. All right, so fired it on. And again, I've already checked all this before with a multimeter, so I'm sure that this is all wired correctly. I also checked this box with a multimeter when I wired it up. So I'm confident that that's all wired right. So as long as we don't see a bunch of sparks, uh, hopefully I'm correct. So I'll fire that on. That should now have electrified the box. And now, hold on to your horses. Let's fire on the charge verter. And it did come on. Now it does have this breaker right here that is off. So now is when I need to go and read the instruction manual, which was actually quite weak. So let me fiddle around with this right now. And um, once I figure it out, I'll jump back on the video. All right, so what I did is I shut the breaker off. I hit enter, which put me into the mode 
to adjust this I adjusted the amperage by using arrow down to the current hit enter and then I adjusted the amperage to half which was um, 50 amps again this will do hundred amps if plugged into in, into 220 so and then I went ahead and cranked the voltage up to as high as it would go which is 57 volts um, that's actually a higher charge than what my grill watt inverters do these things stop somewhere in the 54 I've got these batteries set pretty conservative to um, increase their life but I'm okay because if I'm using this then that means there's been a storm so I want to charge these batteries up fairly high um, so I'm okay with them going to 57 volts the battery management system inside these batteries may shut off before 57 volts I'm gonna to have to check those settings um, again they have all these over protection under protection temperature protection uh, inside of them so but right now it looks like we are charging current voltage is 54.6 and it's sticking almost 50 amps into this battery I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little while let the generator run it's good to let that thing run and not just sit so I'm gonna let it run for a little while and see what happens but, so it ran fine for a few minutes so I went ahead and cranked it up to 60 amps so right now the current voltage on the system is 54.9 it's charging at almost 60 amps and it's put in 0.3 kilowatt hours let me see 0.3 kilowatt hours into the battery so far so i'm going to go ahead and let this thing run for 15 20 minutes and come back and check on it all right it's been running for about 15 minutes again you can see it's slowing down that's because the battery management system is controlling it. It's up to 56.8 and it's putting in 25 amps. So these batteries are getting to be about maxed out as far as full. You can safely charge lithium iron phosphate 48 volt batteries up to, oh, I don't know, 58, some, 58 volts. But again, I like to be a little more conservative on my settings and it'll uh, make these batteries, these batteries will go 10, 15 years if you uh, go easy on them, maybe even longer before they become an environmental nightmare in some landfill. This is not real green guys and gals, as you know. These are just like what they put inside of uh, electric vehicles and we all know that uh those aren't real green either so so i'm happy with this it's looking good it is warm but it's not hot hot wish they put the sticker on straight that might be a little anal but again i wish the sticker was on straight so i'm happy with the way this is working i now feel like i have um, a way to charge this thing if I haven't had any sunshine the way I was doing it before was I had a couple of um, 20 volt uh, 20 amp chargers that I would plug in and they're over here this Ames power and this brand I did buy some of the ones from signature solar so I have a 48 volt version of this one that I bought from Signature Solar. It was supposed to be 48 volt and um, 18 amps. Again, this is my 24 volt one. This one has worked really, really well. I do have a 24 volt DIY system that I built. And um, so these are right now, what I was doing was I was taking this 24 volt battery system, which has about 10 kilowatt hours and if I needed to dump some of the power from this into my main system, I would plug these guys in and, and move the power over. So I was using this solar unit 
to recharge this solar unit. Um, right now I'm just using this to heat this building when it gets cold and I heat it with a couple just incandescent lights like you have in a in a chicken coop. As long as it's not real real cold these do fine. If it gets real cold then we fire up the little propane uh, buddy and heat this place up with that. So the combo of this and these got me through the winter when it was even, um, I don't know, negative 20 Fahrenheit. I also insulated the heck out of this, this building. So not happy with this. Again, I've bought two of these from Signature Solar, the 48 volt ones. They both died. 24 volt one has worked great. Both 48 volt ones died. The first one, Signature Solar replaced with no questions asked. The second one, they gave me so much run around that I swore I wouldn't buy anything from them again. But lo and behold, I did. They got great products, great price. I think they've just grown so quickly that their support is um, not as good as it used to be. So, so in conclusion, you know, this is not a review. I need to test this thing for a while. Let it run, use it. If I would have done a review on the other charger, I would have told you how great it was and it pretty much died right away. So I'm gonna let this thing go and see how it works and come back in, um, six months or so and let you know what I think. I will do a test someday where I let all this drain down and uh, turn off all my solar and one, see how far I can go on my batteries and then two, see how long it takes to charge this. But um, right now I'm kind of afraid to do that because I don't want to be without power. So thanks a lot for joining me. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, like it, subscribe. I promise I'll post some more videos. I do want to show everybody my uh, my setup back here, how I did it, my grow watts, how it's all wired in, my uh, transformer. So I'm, I'll do a video here before too long, kind of walking through my solar setup. But um, for now, you guys have a great day, and I'll uh, I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks.